Cumulative incidence, sometimes called incidence proportion, incidence risk, or simply risk, measures the probability of an event over a period of time. To calculate it, divide the number of new events that occur over the time period by the size of the initial population at risk. For example, suppose the event of interest is the development of some disease, and the study started with four individuals, two of which developed the disease over a period of five years. To calculate the five-year cumulative incidence, we only need to observe this population at two times, one at the start and one at the end of the follow-up period. We divide the number of new cases that occurred during these five years, which is 2, by the size of the initial population at risk, which is 4, so we get 0.5 or 50%. The numerator is the number of individuals who did not have the disease initially, but developed it sometime during the five-year period. Note that the specific time when these individuals developed the disease does not matter. The denominator is not the count of all individuals in the general population. It only represents individuals who do not have the disease at the start of the study and who are susceptible and therefore capable of developing the disease over the follow-up period. Because the numerator is a subset of the denominator, cumulative incidence will be a number between 0 and 1. 0 means that no one developed the disease over the period of follow-up, and 1 means that all individuals who were at risk initially developed the disease over that period. When reporting a cumulative incidence, the period of follow-up should always be mentioned. For example, a 5-year cumulative incidence of 0.5 means that there is a 50% risk of developing the disease over the period of 5 years. But a 50-year cumulative incidence of 0.5 means that the risk is 10 times lower. Cumulative incidence is useful for evaluating the effect of an exposure, such as smoking, by comparing the 10-year cumulative incidence of death for smokers versus the 10-year cumulative incidence of death for non-smokers. But the problem with cumulative incidence is that it assumes that the follow-up period is the same for all study participants. This is almost never the case, especially for long periods of follow-up, because new participants can enter the study during this period, and others may be lost to follow-up by leaving the study voluntarily or dying before the study ended. To avoid bias in these cases, we can measure the occurrence of the disease using incidence rate instead of cumulative incidence, since the incidence rate takes into account different follow-up periods of study participants, and this will be the subject of our next video.